Welcome to part two of the three part video series, beginner to amateur kayak angler in three videos, let's go. So what I'm doing is taking the over 700 videos I've made on the subject of kayak fishing and putting them into a three part series. If you haven't seen part one, we went through how to pick out a kayak, kayak fishing gear guide basics and kayak fishing safety measures. And in this video, I'll be covering the common beginner mistakes, some kayak bass fishing tips, and some things I wish I would have known earlier in the sport. And part three is gonna be the fun stuff. I'm gonna be walking you through all three of the fishing kayaks that I have. When I use them, I'm gonna be walking you through all the DIY modifications and upgrades I've made over the years. And let's hop into the fun stuff. Now, if you have a kayak, there's some things to keep in mind and some mistakes a lot of people make, especially if they're coming over from the bank or upgrading from a bass boat to a kayak. And one of those mistakes is actually not keeping a low profile. Quiet as a mouse, folks. And keep in mind, where are those eyes on those largemouth bass, right? They're right up here. And I don't know about you, but the lakes that I fish, there's bald eagles that come down and grab them. There are ospreys that come down and snatch fish. And in the beginning stages of a bass's life, all they saw was big giant blue heron beaks coming down and grabbing their brothers and sisters left and right. So bass are very aware of what's going on above their heads. So a couple things to keep in mind, especially if you're paddling to a spot, especially if it's shallow, just keep in mind how you're banging around your paddle. Are you throwing it back into your paddle holder? Are you making a lot of noise? If you're coming up on a spot and you have a kayak with a trolling motor, you might want to turn that off and slowly paddle in. If you got a pedal powered drive, just slowly ease that in and utilize the advantage that you have as a kayak angler, which is stealth. Because the best way to get that bass to bite is to make that cast before that bass even knows you're there. All right, and this one kind of goes hand in hand. It's gonna be a whole lot easier to catch that fish if it hasn't seen you. So keep your distance. You don't need to get up there and shake hands with the thing. You just gotta be able to make out the outline or kind of just know that's where they're gonna be held up based off of the season or kind of where you've been catching them recently. So stay stealthy out there, keep your distance, keep your sounds down, keep your jolting sounds to a minimum if you can, and you will put more fish in your yak. And I also recommend if you haven't done it, if you fish without polarized glasses, get yourself a pair of polarized glasses. It's gonna help reduce the glare of the sun. You're gonna be able to see fish better. You're gonna be able to see underwater structure better. You're gonna be able to see where those fish are actually being held up. So, I mean, for like 15 to 20 bucks, you can get yourself a pair of polarized glasses. They can get expensive. They can get the hundreds of dollars. Don't get caught up on all that stuff. I'm sure they're quality. What I have on right now are Cast King Skidaways. I think they're like 15 to $18 and they do the trick. Will I upgrade at some point? Yes. Do I have the money to upgrade? No. So if you're just hopping into it, a really great beginner pair of polarized optics will go a long way for you. And if you're already in a kayak and you find yourself losing some fish, I did a video called, it's likely your fault if you lost that bass. Here's four reasons why. You can check that out in the description below. And in that video, I talk about fishing line, how to take care of it, how to store it, the different types out there, keeping your hook sharp, setting your drag correctly, checking your rod guides, and how to land fish from a kayak. And also there's some nuances to setting a hook from a fishing kayak. So I did a video on that as well, how to set a hook from a kayak. And you guessed it, you can find that down in the description below. All right, now let's move into some things I wish I would have known a little bit earlier in the sport. And if you bought a fishing kayak and you have one, one of the first things I would do is putting some type of keel guard on it before it's too late. Like anything else, if you drop a bunch of cash into something, you're gonna to wanna to be able to take care of it. And if you go a bunch of outings without some type of keel guard, you could really do some damage to the bottom of your kayak. And I got good news for you. There's a bunch of different options out there. Um, you can buy them, and, but they can get kind of expensive. Um, they have a bunch of basically just peel and stick. Some of those pair guards, gator guards can run. I think the last time I looked at it, around $80. And so I actually did a video on how to create your own DIY Kydex keel guard. I think you can make it for like 20 bucks. So if you want to make one of those, it actually doesn't take very long to do. It doesn't cost a whole lot. And I've had them on both of my kayaks for, on my one kayak for a couple years and the other one for a year. And I've had no issues at all with them coming off. And they do a fantastic job of protecting your hull. And of course, I'll put that video link in the description below. All right, my next words of wisdom, if you're just getting into a kayak, and getting out there and fishing is do a little pre-fishing strategy. Have a plan, right? For likely you were limited to the bank and you were just fishing where everybody else was fishing. You're kind of limited to whatever that spot was and it usually wasn't a whole lot of room to get really creative. Here's a spot where you have enough room to cast your rod and so you cast it. Well, now the world is your freaking oyster <laughs> when it comes to kayak fishing because starting out on a new lake can be overwhelming in a kayak. You could fish 
everywhere, but the majority of the bass are probably only in like 10% of the lake that you're in. So knowing where those bass are is gonna help you a whole lot put more fish in your yak. But to do that, you're gonna to have to have a plan. So do some pre-fishing strategy. I know what I like to do before I go out to a new lake is I hop online, do a little research, kind of download the topographical map of the lake and just put together all the knowledge I have as far as spawning season, what are the bass doing in this particular month. And I come up with a plan. I usually circle some places, maybe some ledges, or if I see some fish attractors that the DNR had dropped in that lake, I'll circle it and make it a plan so I'm not wasting time when I'm actually out on the water. So now you're not guessing anymore. You actually have a plan and I guarantee you, you will catch more fish with a plan. All right, the next tip I have for you is, and, and I was guilty of this for a very long time. A lot of times starting out, you usually end up fishing the same lure that you caught your first bass on, right? My grandpappy taught my daddy and my daddy taught me to catch fish on a wacky worm, spinner bait, whatever it is. And you really haven't moved from that method in years, right? and you keep getting the same results. So if you keep fishing the same lure in the same spots, you're gonna get the same results, folks. It's just how it works. And so what I recommend and what I teach is hooking up what I call the unconfidence lure. So behind me, I have six rods and reels with different setups because over the years, I've tied on unconfidence lures and they have become my confidence lures. So I have them hooked up, but I always have one that I'm not confident in. And what I'll do is that I'll go on, I'll research this lure, I'll watch videos of how to fish it and when to fish it and where to fish it, and I will hook it up and I will not take it off until I feel confident with that particular lure. And this is how you grow and this is how you will evolve as a kayak angler. Follow these tips and I guarantee you, you will be happy with your results. All right, the next tip I have for you guys is carry the right tools on your yak. So what I do when I get a new kayak is I actually walk around the kayak and look at all the tools I would need to fix this out on the water because you don't want to ruin a perfectly good day because you didn't have the right tool and you have to go home and call it quits. So what I do is I walk around, okay, I need this particular Phillips head screwdriver, I need this Allen wrench for my propel drive. If, if this comes loose, I have this tool. If this comes loose, I can tighten this up. And I just keep those in the back of my kayak crate with rod holders. And right now they're all rusted because they've been in there for years. But I tell you what, it saved me a couple times. When I'm out in the water, I could easily fix something that I typically would have to go home to fix and would have ruined my fishing day. So carry the tools with you that you need. You never know, that next cast that you weren't able to make because you weren't prepared and with the right tools could have been your personal best. So do yourself a favor. It's only gonna take you yeah, just a few minutes. Have those tools available, you'll be happy. All right, moving on. All right, next let's talk about getting some landing gear for your fishing kayak. And these are just kind of my take on it, my opinion. So here's my recommendation. If you have a fishing kayak under 60 pounds, you don't need some really expensive, you know, landing gear, right? Probably just a really cheaper, lower end kind of cradle cart will work for you. You can get those at Walmart, so forth and so on. But if you start getting over 65 pounds, really when you start getting into your nicer, higher end kayak, I recommend kind of buying a beefier type of kayak cart. So I know there's double rail carts are really nice. A lot of people like those. I actually did a video, the four different types of kayak carts out there and some warnings around those. So I'll throw that video in the description below. But what I recommend, especially if you have a fishing kayak that has track mounts behind your seat, is the native sidekicks and the ones with pneumatic wheels. These things have been incredible. They're just hanging off the back of my kayak right now. And when I get to the dock, I just push them down, lock them in and pull this thing out of the water. And I never have to run them back to my truck. After I get into the water, they're just kind of there. They're hundred percent always attached to my fishing kayak. And for maybe an extra $80 over the double rail carts, it's going to serve you really well. Now I know it's pretty, they are pretty expensive. And so whether it's the native sidekicks or a double rail cart or a cradle cart or whatever it is that you decide to use, or you just plan on wet launching your fishing kayak every single time. Just think through that, there's a lot of different options for you. Next, let's talk about leashing your crap. Unless you wanna make sacrifices to the fish gods often, leash your crap, folks. I gotta tell you what, it will eventually go to the bottom of the lake if it is not leashed. I have a lot of different things leashed on my fishing kayak. I got my fish grips, this pole that my camera's on right now is leashed. I have my fish finder leashed. I have this guy. My catch board for my tournament fishing leashed. There's a lot of different things leashed on my fishing kayak. I even have my GoPros leashed because I recently lost one of my GoPros to the bottom of the lake and I couldn't retrieve it. So uh, I start leashing everything. Now I don't want if I accidentally flip my kayak to get caught up in all these leashes. So you got to be kind of strategic of how you attach them to your fishing kayak. And if you fall out left, and if you were to fall out right, 
Um, just keep in mind you get yourself all tangled up. And so think through that. But if you don't want to lose all your stuff, leashing your gear is a really good idea. And if you're like me and you just love saving money and kind of working with your hands, I actually make a video of how to make your DIY kayak leash for like 25 cents. So I'll throw that video in the link below. Pro tip here, if your significant other doesn't like all the fishing gear that you buy all the time, then don't leash any of your gear. I'll let that cheap rod that you've been wanting to upgrade for a long time to sink to the bottom of the lake. All right, next let's talk about defensive kayaking, especially if you like fishing big wreck lakes. Now I've heard and seen a lot of videos of how boaters and, and, and jet skiers will kind of harass fishing kayakers, clip them. Sometimes they see them, sometimes they're doing it on purpose. Regardless, it doesn't matter because you are the slower vessel and you just simply can't get out of the way fast enough. So practice defensive kayaking. Yes, you have rights out there, but stay safe out there as well, especially on those big holiday weekends where there's a lot of boat traffic. So if you're just getting into kayak fishing or kayak bass fishing, Fishing, and you just want to put fish in your boat and you want to develop some confidence early on I recommend breaking out the wacky worm this is a beginner video a lot of people know about this but the bass simply cannot resist the wacky rigged Senko and so I got a video how to fish the wacky worm I will throw that in the description below and once you start getting some confidence with that particular lure I have another lure for you I think I titled the video the dollar 25 cent lure that nobody knows about and how to slay bass with it and this has a tendency to pick up a larger size bass for me. So between the wacky worm and this other particular lure, which I'll throw the videos below, you can actually get out there and slay. So let's finish off this video with some accessories. Now, I want to first start out by saying I don't recommend when you first get a fishing kayak to start tricking out your kayak with this and that and everything you see in all the videos. Mine is pretty modded out right now, but this is something that has evolved over the years, right? I didn't start out with a fish finder and cameras over my shoulders and batteries and net catch boards and all these things. I slowly, what I did is I go out kind of bare with a fishing kayak and then when I get back, I do a post-mortem. It's like, okay, I want to move my seat up. I want to get a cup holder because I need that. I want to get a rod holder because I want to do some trolling. And then you go out for the second time, come back, do a post-mortem. You're like, okay, I need to move this over here, move this back here. I would really like this. And maybe you purchase one extra thing, go out, do a post-mortem. Then you might be happy for a few times. Then decide, hey, I want to upgrade to maybe a fish finder. And so slowly adding things to your fishing kayak. And I know there's some of you guys out there, you're like, all I need is one pole, one tackle box, and that's it. And if that's how you love the fish, then do that. But if you are like, you like gear, you like to be a little more comfortable, you like to have things accessible to you when you need them, then adding these accessories over time is going to do yourself a lot of favors. If not, you're just gonna get tangled up with them. You gotta get used to them being there slowly over time so it doesn't ruin a fishing experience for you. All right, there are three accessories I love in my fishing kayak. Number one is the keel guard. We already talked about that. Number two is a kayak crate with rod holders. And you can purchase these, but they can get really expensive. I think the black packs and the black pack pros are like 150, 180 dollars. And so you can make one of these out of milk crates, have a bungee top, I actually did a video of it. It's one of my favorite mods that I have ever done. And you can make them for like $25. And so I have a video of how to make that. I've made two now. I have a 1.0 version and a 2.0 version. I'll put the 2.0 version video in the description below. And the third thing that I absolutely love, and it really didn't cost a whole lot, is the Yak Attack Omega Pro rod holders. This guy right here. And so it's really easy to just kind of throw my rod in there, if I'm paddling through something without having to kind of turn it around, easily comes out. You can take it off, easily comes off. You don't want it in your way and it adjusts. And so these are really nice. I think they're like $40 at the time of this video. I love that. You might love it too. I do a lot of trolling, especially when I go from spot to spot in some of these big lakes and I don't want to waste time. I want to potentially catch fish. So what I'll do is I'll throw on a crankbait. I'll throw it off to the side, put the pole in the rod holder, start checking my phone and you'd be surprised how many fish I catch. I've caught you know, a bunch of bass, some catfish along the way that I typically wouldn't have caught because I'd literally just be going from spot to spot. So keep that in mind for $40, you can put some more fish in your boat and it's kind of a fun way to kind of catch fish in my opinion. I see fishing in the law of averages. So anytime my lure is in the water, I increase my chances of putting another one in the boat. I guess I have one more for you. One of my favorite upgrades, there's not a lot of real estate on fishing kayaks. So what I did is for my native Slayer Propel 10, this is not it. Um, I actually had an undersea storage option that you can just purchase. Craftsman makes a VersaStack storage and you can kind of reach under your seat and kind of pull out these two trays and you can have a lot of your terminal tackle and the lures you plan on using that day because you did your research, because you did a pre-fishing strategy. Uh, but these things are really nice. They're not that expensive. So I'll throw the link in the description below. DeWalt makes one and Craftsman makes one, but you got to make sure that your fishing kayak actually fits it. So 
I know that my Bonafide P127 it won't fit it. I'm actually in the process of working with 3D Yak to come up with an under the sea storage option. It has a drawer that kind of pulls out. But on some of these kayaks, um, you can fit one of those under, some you can't. So do your research and you will love utilizing that space underneath your seat for some extra storage there. Now I know that was a lot of information, but hopefully what took me years to learn, um, you will learn in just three videos to cut down on that learning curve for yourself. And so if I haven't missed anything, if you guys are out there and maybe you're not a beginner and you're watching this and you have some insight and some wisdom to share, please throw that down in the description below. We're all learning here. All right, in part three, I'm gonna walk you through all three of my fishing kayaks. I have a Sun Dolphin Aruba 10, which they're around $300. I have a Native Slayer Propel 10. I picked that up on Facebook Marketplace for $1,300. And I have a Bonafide P127, which I picked up on Facebook Marketplace as well for $2,100. So I'm gonna walk you through those fishing kayaks, when I use each one, where and walk through all my modifications and why I have them on a kayak and why I believe they help me become a better angler or just make my experience a lot more comfortable. So if you're watching this and it's been more than a week since this video posting, you'll see that video part three right there.